So welcome back everyone to another episode. If you're wondering why we have this crank out of this block, the Evo suffered the big end bearing problem and you can see here we've got a nasty crack going all the way down the big end and uh, we found out what the issue is. Gonna get into that now, start stripping the rest of the block down, enjoy the episode. I'm gonna get on with getting the rest of the last bits out of this uh, block so I can strip it down and get it cleaned. Um, you can see at the minute we've got the H11 head studs and we've also got the ARP mains under there as well. We've got this water. Uh, pipe as well for the back and just going to completely strip it down so it's just a bare block so let's go on with that The block is all bagged up and the oiled. Make sure that you oil up the bores. Make sure there's loads of oil in the bores so you don't get any surface rust. Just pulled out the head studs and the main studs for the crank. And you can clearly see these are the H11 Cosworth head studs. So uh, they're good to go again. And then you can see on the mains, if you look up close, um, it's still got the assembly lube on the, uh, from the last build. So you can tell it hasn't done many miles from the last build at all. And that's just purely because of uh, using a poor crank. So all these good parts come off the last build and whoever built it last was probably just an engine builder but didn't understand the performance engines, thought they could use a crank, you know, they should have known but they couldn't. So here's a little tip for you people right now, um, don't matter how good you are, how good of a mechanic you are, an engine builder you are, um, it's always better to make things a lot quicker for yourself. When you're doing a big build and you're doing a build that's going to take some time, you will inevitably lose stuff, whether it's a bolt or washer or whatever. And sometimes, like say I lose um, one of these ARP washers. It's gonna take me a week or so just to source one of these washers or order it, I might have to buy a full set and it's just gonna put the old time frame back on the build. So don't, as I say, it don't matter how good you are, how uh, expert you think you are, make things easier. Just bag them all up, label them up and you've got them instantly to hand. Um, these are the cam caps here. Now let's just say, I don't know, I lose one of these bolts, misplace it, whatever. I'm gonna have to go to Mitsubishi or find someone on the internet that's gonna supply me one. It's gonna take time. Um, I know that I could go through a tub of bolts like this. These are um, for Vauxhall, for Zlets, And I know where every single one of these bolts or nuts, whatever they do. But I've still got to search for them. You know, that's the bottom ball joint bolt that goes through the hub. It's just a lot quicker, a lot easier. I label everything up. That's what I'm gonna get onto now, just making everything tidy. So that's everything now labelled up, all safely in the bags together now, so I can put these away for storage and I know that everything when I pull it out, it's all going to be there, all the bolts are going to be there and I ain't got to mess around looking for everything. So the pistons that we're going to use on this uh, new engine build are going to be CP Carrillo pistons. Now these are a high compression piston and anyone who knows CP Carrillo will know these are the go-to pistons for any super high boost, high power performance engine, whether it's Evo or not. So. We are using obviously the short skirted stroker piston. So you can see in there we've got a billet CP piston. So these are a 2618 alloy piston, really, really high um, debt resistance. These pistons are so strong, you can also run them into the 12s for fueling and they'll still be fine. Um, they're my go-to piston for any sort of high boost, high power application. You can see I'm just starting to gap up the rings now for them. So coupling these pistons, with these manly I-beam rods. Now, these are one of the strongest heavy duty rods for the stroker kit on the market. Um, the other rods that I would use are Carrillo, which are obviously the same company as CP, or Arrow rods. So I've just went over the whole of the block and give it a nice fresh coat of black paint. Just went with a gloss black, easiest way. And I've just started to uh, gap the piston ring. So that's the secondary ring. I've done the oil rings already, I've attached them to the piston, so I've just oiled up all the block. Um, first things I'm gonna do as well is get all this gasket removed off of the side of the block. Um, what I do is with this is just a flat blade, a scraper blade. Make sure you don't dig into any of the metal, um, otherwise you're gonna end up with uh, chunks of metal getting removed and you're gonna have to fill that with sealant, which you don't want. So just nice scrape it, keep the blade flat. So I'll quickly show you what I mean. So what I do is I use a nice fresh blade, one that ain't got no damage to it and you can literally just scrape off the sealant. Make sure you keep it flat to the block. So the easiest way to uh, check these ring gaps is, I've already gapped this one up, but you get your piston, uh, make sure you've got no rings or nothing on it, and then you just push it down to seat into the bore. Make sure your bore's nice and oiled up, otherwise you're gonna scratch the bore up. You can see the bore's already been honed. 
so you can see the piston ring is sitting in there nicely now now you can see at the top there there's writing always have the writing that's leading up to the top um, never have the writing underneath it's always at the top on some piston rings they have a little dot on there or some of them even have top written on the top this is the oil scraper ring the secondary ring so i've just got that one up so i'm going to do the um, compression ring now the top one i just want to say this is not an engine building class what i'm doing now i'm just giving you a few tips um, a lot of the work i'm going to be doing is going to be off camera because a lot of the specs and everything takes a long long time to set so even if you can't find the writing on the top of the ring like that you can clearly see why this is called the oil scraper ring so i can get the right angle right close up you can see there's an edge to the outside of the ring there and that's what scrapes the oil back down into the crankcase so it doesn't blow by the piston rings so a little look here into the back of the block now you can see that on these sumps they don't run a gasket and then what I mean by that is they don't run a physical gasket like a metal or a paper gasket they run silicon gasket so they just literally run silicon sealant when you fit this silicon sealant to the block to the sump make sure you put the bare minimum on possible you can see there's a bit too much on this and what can happen over time the heat will get this and it will break it off and this will get into your sump and end up in your oil strainer so whenever you're changing the uh, seals on these blocks always make sure you use the absolute bare minimum you can get away with to make it seal so the other thing we want to look at these here on each of these cylinders they're called piston oil squirters so what they do is they provide high oil pressure to the bottom of the piston so the piston skirt is going to sit here and this is going to squirt high pressure oil onto it now you can imagine that the cylinder is going to be stupidly high temperatures and the oil is going to be at lower temperature so what that does is even though the oil is hot it's not going to be as hot as the piston so that cools the piston down um, a lot of people think that's all it does just cools the piston down it allows a longevity but what that can do also is when you get high cylinder pressures and high cylinder temperatures you create detonation um, this is pre-ignition of the fuel so by cooling down the piston you can actually run slightly more power without getting the detonation issues so that's why you will find high, all high performance engines will run a piston to oil squirter at the bottom of the block So you can see here I've just removed all the sealant off the block quickly with a flat blade and it's interesting what you find underneath sealant and stuff from previous owners. So you can see here where someone in the past has got a uh, pry bar or a screwdriver in there to wedge off the sump and you can see it's gouges into the block. Obviously that's going to create a leak if you don't uh, seal that up with sealant which is probably why they've used a ton of sealant. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to chase the threads on these blocks because you can see they're slightly rusty. Just get any of the sealant out of them ready for the new bolts. So all I'm doing here is going through the uh, threaded hole with a tap just to run it through, get rid of any of the rust, any of the sealant that's in there and I'll chase the threads also in all the main caps and it just allows for proper torquing of the bolts when you go to put the sump on and you can see it didn't look like there was anything in the holes but when you've chased it through all the nasty stuff comes out you can see all the sealant and everything that's in there previously that hasn't been removed and uh, that's just going to uh, allow you to torque up the bolts a lot better and not strip any of the threads So as you just see there, I went over the whole block and I threaded all the holes, got all the crap and the silicon and rust out of it. I also got all the silicon off of the face of the block and I decked the block as well. So you see how nice and smooth it is now. And you can get uh, the sealing perfectly between the sump and the block. You can see how much silicon that I removed off the block, way too much. Also, I've removed the oil squirters as well at the bottom of the block because as you know that this had some bearing material in it so I'm going to go through all the oil ways, blast them all out with air brake cleaner and obviously I didn't want none getting stuck in between the oil squirters and blocking the oil squirters up. With the oil squirters sometimes they're specific to the um, cylinder but these ones ain't, they actually are identical but I've numbered them up anyway. Um, if you are going to take your oil squirters out sometimes obviously these are twisted a different way or whatever make sure you put them back in the right way. This is what an oil squirt looks like, it's just a high pressure oil feed basically to the piston this is the evo's clutch plate you can see it's a trim plate xzd um, you see in the last episode where i showed you that the clutch plate on the front the one went to the flywheel had no meat left on it on the uh on the clutch plate side that's the flywheel side 
that's the clutch plate side. So you can see it's right run low on meat, but I haven't checked the inside of this lot yet. So I'm gonna unbolt this lot now and see what else we're dealing with. So we know what to order for the fresh clutch. So this is very interesting. So you can see here, this blue line here on this XZD clutch. When this XZD clutch comes from the factory, they balance the whole lot, the plates, the everything. And uh, this blue line is to show you how to line them all up so they're in balance. Now, whoever put this clutch on last obviously didn't know that because you can clearly see this plate here should be here and there's another plate there that should be all the way around here. So that means that this clutch plate has been out of balance ever since it's put on and that definitely could have contributed to the failure of the crank, um, excessive vibration, especially at high revs. Uh, when we put this together as well, we're gonna put a fluid dampener on the crank just to stop vibrations, but it was something I wanted to look into and it's definitely, definitely, this uh, flywheel has not been put back together properly. So I've just blown apart all the clutch so that I can check it all over and you can see there's the mark and uh, there's the wrong fitted plate. So I've took the clutch plate out of it. Now even if I turn that plate now around to the right marking, which is there, you can see it's still on the wrong side, which only means this clutch plate here is actually upside down. So who the hell put this thing back together? I'm gonna to try and find out who done the clutch on this last because it's absolutely ridiculous. You can see I've had to turn it upside down to get the markings to line up. And now this one. So now you can see all the plates are lined up in their proper position um, where they should have been from the XED factory and where they should have been fitted on the car um, to limit the amount of vibrations. So, so that is one perfectly aligned clutch. You can see the marks on the flywheel all the way up the plates, up to the cover plate. So that's how it should have been lined up. So you can see here on the flywheel, where it's had holes drilled into the flywheel. That's because this flywheel has been on a balancing machine and then it's been balanced with the clutch, which is why it's so important to have it all together properly. It's like a road wheel. If you have your road wheels balanced and then the weights fall off, you know, you're gonna get vibration. Imagine these spinning at 8,000 RPM. So here we have the new crankshaft. So this is a genuine 4G64 crankshaft straight from Mitsubishi. You can see it's a brand new crankshaft, not messing around this time, having no issues with reground crank. So you can see this crank has already got all its protective coating still on it. It's gonna be removed. You can see it's like a wax coating. Basically it just stops any rust build up on the journals. So the journals are gonna be highly polished. Gonna remove all that with a brake cleaner, get rid of all that wax and nasty grease and everything that's on there. So we go back to the bare metal and then we can highly polish these journals. So you can see here on the side, genuine Mitsubishi Motors part. Um, didn't want to mess around this time with crankshafts on the market, but we went for the genuine items as we know it's going to be perfect. These are highly balanced as well from the factory, saves us having to do it. You can see all the drill holes and everything in the counter balances. So I've just removed the crankshaft from the block so you can have a better look at it. You can see it's all covered in a protective coating, which is ideal. And also you can see here what bearings we've gone for. So I've gone for the ACL race series bearings. I love these bearings. These are obviously for the 4G63 engine. And these are in standard size because obviously we've got a standard size crank, no regrind on this one. So these ones are for the mains. These are the main bearings. These are the big end bearings, also known as the rod bearings. And these ones, as you can see, are the thrust washers. And the thrust washers sit in the side of here and stop the crank moving sideways. So basically when you get crank walk, it's normally because the thrust washers on your crankshaft or your main bearings have worn out. So you can see they would sit in there. So you can see I'm just laying things out all nice and clean now. Um, started to put the rods onto the pistons. I've been gapping up the rings. I'm cleaning out these oil squirters. I'm gonna clean out the block properly. I'm gonna get all these clearances perfectly sorted out as well on the crank. They will be in the next episode. I'll go through all that lot and then we can start bolting this thing back together. As this video is all about engine failure, I thought I'd show you some failures that I've had lately. So this is a Z20 let head, and this one was caused by people still using heads with cracks in them. So the cracks are caused by over torquing the spark plug, and people still think it's okay to use cracked heads. Oh, I've no, had no problem with them, etc. But as soon as you start pushing them, you can see what's happened here. The valve seat, obviously because of the cracks, has actually come out and it smashed the exhaust valve to pieces. So look at the state of that exhaust valve. So that's one of the failures. You can see it's absolutely scrapped this head. This head is scrapped now. There's literally nothing can do about it. I know you can start welding heads up, but these Z20 let heads ain't expensive. Just got to find one without any cracks. So this one is 
when a well-known mapper uh, decides he wants to run stupid amounts of ignition advance for a Z20. This is a forged piston from a Z20 LEH, so they're very strong. And it was only running on a KO4 turbo. And that's what happens when you run way too much ignition, way too little fuel, and you uh, end up with a melted piston. So you can see that one. That's a fun one. This one is another mapper. It's actually a different mapper to that one. Running way too much boost through a poor little KO4. So you can see what that does to that. I think it was running 26 PSI through this KO4. This KO4 was less than 500 miles old. You can see the state of that. Absolutely trashed the bearings on that. And then this one is from, you remember the CVH engine, the RS Turbo, that we had all the issues with. So you can see, we didn't know that this lobe had been running terribly. This is a Kent cam, you can see on this side. It's the Kent CVH35 cam, it's a well-known cam. We used to use these back in the day, but they are absolutely terrible now. They're not hardened or anything. And you can see that lobe is non-existent. So that's how the lobe should look, even that's worn, you can see. But that load there is non-existent, so it was not opening the valve. Then this one is from the Super engine that I built recently. This is an inlet valve, so it should never have done this. This is an STI nitrided valve. And you can see when I was doing checks with it and cra crack checking them, you can see a nasty crack there. Now you think, oh, that's just a hair or something. But you look closer and closer, you can clearly see, I've marked it all out there. That's a crack. Now this engine was running absolutely fine with that crack, but it won't be long before that failed, dropped its valve, and it ended up through the piston, so it was very lucky we spotted that. And then obviously we've got the spun bearing crank due to the crack in this crank that you've seen loads of times now already. And I just wanted to run you through, I thought it'd be funny to show you different failures. These are all preventable failures. Every failure in these engines were preventable. Every one of them I can give you the fault of why it happened and how to prevent it. So I just thought I'd run you through them, it'd be fun to have a little look at them. So the next job to do in the next episode is obviously to strip down this engine and get it looking like brand new again. So you can see we've got to strip out the valves. We've got the valve springs are the only things that left in there and the valves. And then we're going to change the stem seals, obviously. And we'll clean out all the ports. And you can see how nasty the uh, valves are at the minute. They're all carboned up. These valves are oversized valves. Um, what I also want to do is I'm going to straight edge this um, head because this head has been skimmed very recently and I do not want to skim it again because I don't know how many skims it's had but it's had quite a few so I do not want to skim this head again and obviously I don't want to be replacing this head because it's got the big valves in it I'm going to clean up all the ports as I said give this a proper proper deep clean get all the nasty gunk out of it and then we're going to check the valves the valves have been cutting not long ago but I'm going to relap them in some other parts that we've got as well are the hydraulic lash adjusters now we went with hydraulics again with this car because there's no need for solids at the revs that we're doing um, on these these are OE quality um, lash adjusters now on the stock lash adjusters the oil hole on the top is only one millimeter wide and what happens is over time that all gets clogged up and these start tapping it's a common thing on the 4G64 engine and the 4G63 so you can see here we've got a nice uh, fresh set with the bigger oil ways these are the three millimeter oil ways so it's going to be perfect to go into the freshly built new engine and it should be as quiet as a mass so i hope you enjoyed this episode so join me on the next episode and we'll be uh starting to install some of this stuff and uh, cleaning up the block properly just run out of brake cleaner so i've got to run out and get some but i thought i'd keep you updated so you know what i'm up to 